Hello, it's me, and you're probably wondering why I have my 4x4x6 out here and why I've got all these stickers on it that seem to make it not make too much sense. Well, the reason why I did this is because I had a, a, a viewer question, which I thought was actually pretty interesting. Um, he uh, has been making super cuboids, and you recall that I did do a, a video regarding how to 180 degree rotation of one layer or what, one center or 180 degree rotation of both centers. Um, well, he had another dilemma. He took a four by four by six, and what he did is he stickered it to look like a super cube. Now, he didn't sticker like this, but because I didn't want to take the time to do all the stickering, I just wanted to set it up into a vague approximation of what he was talking about because here's his dilemma. Now, imagine this. What he did is he took um, the puzzle to where all of these are one color straight on down here. So imagine these four are say green. I have the blue here for a reason, but these are green and then you're green all the way down here so that this center is green. You're green over here so that this center is green all the way up here. This over here is yellow, so I just put the center in here to show that that's yellow. And this is yellow, so this whole thing is yellow. This is all white. This is supposed to be white, but I put the white center here, white center here. And then this is um, blue over here, although this center is incorrectly placed. So this whole thing is blue. So what I did is I just, uh, I ignored these parts, except for the top. And I put in the correct centers, uh, just to prove a point. I ignored the, the bottom part over here. So now imagine this is going to be all orange. So you, you see this will be an orange center here. This is an orange center here. This will be all red over here, including all of this. So this is the red center here. This is all black. Just pretend like it is. All you need to know is the center. So I hope you have the basic structure of what I'm talking about. Now these two are actually going to be different colors. This isn't green. Uh, ignore that. This is blue, like a square blue. This is like a dark blue. I just ran out of colors. But so you can see this is the same as this. This is going to be the same as this. So I hope that makes sense. But basically that's how he had organized it. But his problem was this. His problem is that the center is rotated by 90 degrees. Now you can imagine if this green were here, and this blue were here, this white were here, and this yellow were here, this would look like the proper orientation of the center that he was going for. You know, with this rotated here, this is all green, all blue, all white, and all yellow. And this center uh, matches up with this blue, as does this. This green matches up with, uh, with this, and so on and so forth. So I, I hope you kind of have the picture. But all I did is I just put the centers in and not the rest because that'll illustrate the point. So his dilemma was, well, what do I do about this? Now pretend like the bottom, forget about the bottom, but the way the bottom one was is everything was fine. Everything was put in. So if this whole thing was orange, this whole thing is orange here and these would be orange as well. This whole thing is red. All of these are red, red, and these are all red as well. But that, that doesn't really matter for the purposes of what we're talking about because all that was fine. But he was saying, well, what do I do about this? Everything is in, all the edges are placed, Pretend like all the edges are in as well. Um, but how do I rotate this 90 degrees? Well, the first question that you should ask when uh, approached by something like this is, how did this happen to begin with? Because according to the law of cubes, you cannot um, rotate anything uh, just by 90 degrees. You can only rotate a total of 180 degrees, which means I can rotate one center by 180 degrees, or I can rotate two centers by 90 degrees, as long as I've conserved a total of 180 degrees. But that's not gonna work, because if I rotate this 90 degrees, I can't rotate anything else by 90 degrees because it's gonna mess things up. Well, what about taking these out and putting them in one by one, doing an, a three-cycle algorithm? Well. It doesn't really matter what algorithm you want to use, but ask yourself, is it possible? Regardless of how I set up the algorithm, is it possible to pluck these out and put them in and exchange them to where they all end up 90 degrees? Well, let's take a look. It would mean we'd have to do uh, a total of even number swaps to make it make sense. So we'll have one swap where this will come here, this will come up here, then two swaps where this will come here, and what was white is now here, and then three swaps. So the answer is no, you can't. You cannot do an, an, an odd number of swaps, and that's what it would take to rotate this 90 degrees, which means we can't solve it like this, as is, and the question is, how did we scramble it like this? Well, any thoughts, any questions? Well, uh, let me give you kind of a hint of why something like this might have occurred. Now, 
This is the classic situation when you're assembling an even layer puzzle and you assembled it to where this was 90 degrees off from where it should be. Now, notice if you if you guys have ever used this over here, if you recognize this, this is your archetypic 4x4 four four super cube. When learning how to do super cubes, this is the one that generally you learn from because you not only have the colors, but you also have specific orientations. Unlike normal 4x4s, four orientation matters. This red one has to be facing up, yellow has to be facing here, purple down here, and white down here. But one thing that you never ran into when you scrambled it or solved it, although you can put the centers anywhere, you never ran into a situation where one center was off by 90 degrees. You could put it like that, I could make that happen, but I never got fooled like that. This um, 4x4 never got into a situation where I ended up with that most unusual parity of 90 degree rotation. So it wasn't until I started to do this guy over here. You remember this? This is Trey Poon's, um Megamorphinx. Megamorphinx is a 4x4 four four, um, uh, master power morphinx, basically. And um, when I was solving it, I figured, well, it's really just this. Forget about the shape shifting, forget about that. This is really just a 4x4 four four super cube. Um, and uh, uh, as I was one of the first that actually bought it, I, I had one of the first, um, probably the first YouTube solve slash tutorial on this puzzle. And uh, I came across something that I'd never come across before and hadn't seen anywhere else, which was a very strange, most unusual parody. And if you look back at the video with this, I point that out completely baffled as to what that was. Because what it was, was it appeared that the corners were out with two out and um, two in, which didn't make any sense until I figured that it was the center that was rotated by 90 degrees. So no matter how many times you do this, you'll never get a situation where this is rotated by 90 degrees, but this one more than likely you will. Now why is that? Why would this have that 90 degree center parity and this one does not? And I'll tell you that in addition to that, this guy, this 4x4 rhombic dodecahedron, similarly does not have that parity situation. This does not get rotated 90 degrees accidentally, so to speak. But I'll tell you other 4x4 mods will, such as this. This is a Tragebird's um, octahedron. This will also potentially land you into a into that kind of a parity. Not just this, but other 4x4 mods you see me do, such as this, the uh, um, hexagonal dipyramid, 4x4 version of that, and not to mention our axis cube, 4x4 axis cube. This also ran into that kind of a parody, and of course, who can forget our ghost cube? Take a look at these two together. You know, these are kind of interesting. They almost look the same, except for the fact that they're very, very different puzzles. So, anyway, that's kind of an aside. So stop and think about that for a second, why that is. Why do some 4x4 super cubes and 4x4 mods give you that kind of parity and others don't? Stop, think about it. Did you figure it out? Well, the reason has to do with specificity. What specificity means is that something is only used in a particular situation. So when you look at these centers, it's very specific where these go. There's no equivocation. There's no, uh, in other words, this one can only be here in relation to the rest of this. This can only be here, not just in the relation to the rest of these, but in relation to here as well. So it's these three colors, these very specific um, um, centers, there's no other center that looks like this anywhere on the puzzle that guides me and prevents me from falling into that parity. Same thing with this. This has three colors to the center. This has two colors to the center, but basically there's no other red and blue. Not here, not anywhere else here. So because of that, I cannot falsely equivocate. The fact of the matter is, if it were a pure 4x4 um, super cube, you wouldn't get a 90 degree rotation. If you did, you would have to do it and know exactly that you're doing it and you know it wouldn't fit. But what is the difference with this? Well, the difference with this is that if you look at these centers over here, this shape and color shares another shape and color with this center, which in turn shares it with this center. So anytime you have a mod, let's say you've designed a mod or you bought a mod and it's a four x four, when you see that there's equivalency of centers, then there's that possibility of potentially falsely equivocating and putting this over here and this over here, which tantamounts to a swap. When you have a swap like that, then you can very easily end up with a situation where this is rotated. Because for this to rotate 90 degrees, I have to do three swaps right? Uh, that would be one, two, three, which you can't do. But if I add on a swap over here, it becomes four. 
Because it becomes four swaps, and because you won't know the difference from one center to the next, you can potentially have this scrambled into a situation where one center appears to be rotated by 90 degrees. And you're able to do that because this false equivocation added a swap to allow that to happen. So if you look at these, once again, you're gonna see equivalencies of centers. Actually, let's do this right here. Where's my, so equivalency of center, so this will do it. How about the, the octahedron? Well, sure, I got this blue center here, I got it here and here. This is just ripe for that kind of thing. Um, same thing over here. Yeah, I've, got a, I've got this blue over here, I've got this blue over here. So there is that, that potential. And this beast over here too. Um, if you recall this center, these guys here, these two had an equivalency among these two. So anytime you have the potential for false equivocation, you have the potential of causing an even number swaps to rotate at 90 degrees. Now, as interesting as that may be, what does this have to do with this puzzle? Well, when answering the question why this happened, it must have had a center that was falsely, uh, that was uh, equivalent to, to each other. Well, how about these? Are these equivalent to anything else? And the answer is, uh, well, no, uh, pretend like these aren't greens. These aren't greens over here. This is the only green, blue, white, and um, uh, yellow. Now you can say, well, wait a minute, there's a white over here. Aren't these two equivalent? And the answer is in a four by four by six, it's not. I turn this over here, you can see this piece is not equivalent at all. There's nothing equivalent between this and the bottom. Again, ignore that that's white, they're all different colors. But here's your equivalences. When you notice the way that he set this up, he set it up so that all these are white, which means this white is equivalent to this white. This blue is equivalent to this blue, we'll call that dark blue. Over here, this yellow, orange rather, is equivalent to this orange, and you get the picture. Green equivalent to green, red equivalent to red. So, you have ample opportunities to falsely equivocate centers. Somewhere along the line of your super cuboid solve, you swapped two of these which shouldn't be. And because you did that, you had the potential of having the right number of swaps to put this 90 degrees off from where they are. So that's how it happened. Now, how can we get out of it? Well, to get out of it, we're gonna have to use the, the um, uh, swapping techniques of the last two centers, the algorithm that does a three cycle. If, uh, if you recall, this, the, what this algorithm does is this comes up to here, this comes over to here, and this comes over to here. It's really just a variation of the corner swap where these guys swap around. So we're gonna be using that to get out of this. So how are we gonna do that? Well, the first thing we wanna do is recognizing that there's no equivocations between this equivalent um, pieces from here to down here. Let's just get this in. Get this in, it's gonna mess up one of our sides, but that's okay, because we can use the aspect of false equivocation. I'm gonna use, say, this side, because it's easier to, uh, it's easier to visualize. Uh, maybe I'll use this over here. Maybe I'll use this, because that way you won't get confused at the fact that there's all these greens, and then there's this green. Although there's this red and this red. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, we'll use this one. I think maybe it stands out more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just basically put all these in the way that they're supposed to be by, by using that, uh, uh, that algorithm. So I'm going to turn it down here and start cycling these. So what I'm going to do is move this up to here with the purposes of eventually moving it down here. Again, um, I don't have any specific techniques with this except for that algorithm and what that is going to be. This is going to be my R move over here. And this is my L move. I ignore the shape shifting. I ignore the fact that these are not equivalent uh, sides. I'm just doing center, uh, super cube center. Where the, since this is a four by four by six, I'm using these four as the centers, not all of these. So what that algorithm is going to be is it's going to be R with the middle, UI, LI, U, R, I, U, I, L, and then you have to move it back with a UI. So notice it did that cycling around. This, what was here, came up to here, this went to here, and this went to here. Okay, now I'm doing that for the purposes of this, now I wanna put over to here, and that's what I'm gonna do. Now when I move this, I'm not just gonna move the top like this, I'm gonna move both of these because there's gonna be some bandaging going on. So I'm gonna turn this over here, actually turn it all the way over here. What'll happen now is this will come here, this will come here, and this will come up here, ready, to, ready for action. So, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. 
and then move this back to a UI. Uh, so now this is in and this is in. This is a uh, Tom Z um, creation, which again, you can see the movement is just absolutely incredible. So now next, um, this is also in, I need to get this guy in. Now because I only have one that's out, I'm now gonna turn it like this so that this is up here. Turn this over here and I want to coordinate it where this will come up to here, this will come here, and this will come here. Again, I know I'm missing the center up, but that's okay. That I can get back. So I'm going to turn this here, like so. So now this is going to come here, and this will all be in, and that was really my goal. So, same thing. R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, and L and then move this back here. Now be careful because I'm doing a lot of deconstruction and reconstruction. So because I made that turn, I'm just gonna turn this back here to get this back in. And we'll turn this back here. So you can see this is now all solved um, according to how he set up the puzzle. So now we have to deal with this. Now let's, let's watch this carefully. What you can see is that um, this is the yellow side. This is yellow over here. This is yellow over here. This is white this is white, this is blue, and this is blue. Orange, orange, blue, blue, black, black. Okay, so uh, this, these are okay over here. Now what has to happen is these two have to swap. So you see the, uh, this is actually black and this is red. This is black over here. So this black needs to come here. If you can imagine this whole thing is black, imagine that. Um, now this red needs to be here to match this center because this whole thing is actually red if you can visualize that. So now I have to do a two cycle, but not really because I have equivalency of pieces. All I need to do is flip flop these two. Well, I've got a red one which is equivalent here. So if I were to turn this up like so, now again, pay attention to how you're deconstructing and reconstructing because the results of this algorithm does not touch any of these things. That's the neat thing about it. These two need to swap. So if I move this over here, and I move this one up here, I will cause a veritable two cycle, which is actually a three cycle. Because to make these two swap, if I do that algorithm twice, it'll be one, two, this will be here, one, two, this will be here, and then one, two, this will be here, this will be here. Now again, pay no attention to the uh, stickers underneath, but this is just to show that. So now I'm just going to do that two cycle, uh, that, that three cycle rather, two times. So R, U, I, R, I, U, oops, R, I, well, yeah, bang, zoom, pow, how's that? And then this gets turned back. Okay, so now we do it again, and this is going to be here, this is going to be here, and this is going to be here. Bang, zoom, pow, slash, smack, dab, crunch, and turn. Okay, now we have to remember what we did to, uh, to get it back. This turned over here, and this turned over here. Okay, so the overall effect is this is in, these yellow centers are now where they need to be, black are where they need to be, red is where they need to be, green, blue, orange, and white. So. That was a direct answer to the question. Uh, sorry about the confusing color scheme, but I thought it was a, certainly a worthy question to discuss because it is super cuboid strategy, and it brings to mind the notion of parity, uh, false equivocation. So I hope that's clear, but again, get this in, and then let the ones that have uh, equivalent pieces get out because it, then you can do a, a three cycle that is that looks like a two cycle. So. Um, Hope that helped. Let me know and uh, keep the questions coming. Any chance to pull out Tom Z's puzzles, I always take. Thanks for watching.